We turn now to the fight in Washington on how to best battle the virus and the economic crisis. Joining us now, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who we spoke with a few weeks ago while he was in self-quarantine. Thanks so much for joining us again tonight, Senator. Lindsay, great to be with you. Thank you, Pam. Today, your home state of Texas surpassed more than 10,000 cases of COVID-19. What's the biggest concern for you right now and for Texas? Any worry that the people may let their guard down and push to reopen too soon in places that haven't yet had a surge of cases? Well, look, we, we're, we're facing two natural uh, and national disasters simultaneously. We've got a, a public health disaster of, of the coronavirus epidemic, and, and, and that is, it is we, we are imposing extraordinary public health steps to keep people safe. And, 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 and to stop this pandemic from getting even worse. At the same time, we've got an economic disaster. We, we have now over 17 million people uh, who've lost their jobs just in the last three weeks. And, 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 and it is the consequence of government policies protecting our safety that, that has devastated jobs and industries. We've got to solve both. We've got to listen to the science and the medical professionals, flatten the curve and stop this disease. But we also need to, as quickly as possible, get people back to work uh, so they can provide for their families and, and we can keep uh, keep people away from, from the crushing poverty that, that, that results from stopping our economy. And today, of course, Congress debated a Republican proposal for another $250 billion in funds for those small business loans, which Democrats blocked. Democrats argue that their own proposal included all of the $250 billion that Republicans requested for small businesses, plus money for hospitals and first responders. Is that really a partisan wish list, as you called it on Twitter today? I mean, Democrats say that they're trying to get ahead of the likely need for more funding on the front lines fighting this virus while also targeting emergency aid to small businesses. Well, I think congressional Democrats, unfortunately, have too frequently approached this crisis as an opportunity, an opportunity to advance their own partisan agenda. We need to be coming together in a bipartisan manner. If you look at the emergency relief bill that passed Congress two weeks ago, it ended up passing the Senate unanimously, 96 to nothing. Every Republican voted for it. Every Democrat voted for it. I voted for it, and Bernie Sanders voted for it, everybody in between. That's what we need to be focusing on. That bill almost went down because at the last minute, Nancy Pelosi came in and held it hostage for a whole series of partisan objectives, things like the Green New Deal, that, that have nothing to do with the coronavirus epidemic. What we saw today it, it is, is one of the most important components of that emergency relief bill are, are, are the loans to small businesses to keep them alive. And by the way, everyone agrees with, with those loans, Democrats and Republicans. The problem is, in, in the five days the program has been live, there's been so much uptake, so many small businesses grasping for a lifeline that the administration came and said, we need to replenish these funds. The Democrats, this should have been an easy bipartisan agreement to say, we want to keep these small businesses alive. We want to keep people with paychecks and jobs. And instead, they decided, no, let's use it as to hold hostage for other priorities. That, that was wrong, and, and, and it's the same games Nancy Pelosi played two weeks ago. They need to stop that and focus on solving these crises right now. But let's take a step back. I mean, why didn't Republicans try to negotiate a deal with Democrats before voting on the bill? I mean, just like the last rescue bill, uh, you're going to have to get support from both sides of the aisle. So why not get the Democratic buy-in so that these measures can get passed more quickly and get aid to the Americans who need it? Well, if you look at the, the, the Senate bill that passed, that was initially negotiated in a bipartisan manner. There were a number of Democratic senators who were actively part of drafting it, who were engaged. Everyone expected that it would pass. And then at the last minute, Nancy Pelosi, they made a very cynical decision and torpedoed the whole thing, held it hostage for four days. Um, for, for a series of, she was demanding subsidies for windmills. Now, now, as I asked on the Senate floor, what the hell does a windmill have to do with the coronavirus epidemic? She wanted additional emissions constraints on air, airplanes. That had nothing to do with this crisis. And, and it's just an example of, of, I think, cynical partisanship. Small businesses like, like restaurants and bars and nail salons and hair salons and movie theaters those are the businesses that, that are going belly up right now. And, and under this program, they can get a guaranteed loan from their local community lender that, that enables them to pay salary to keep people on paychecks. Millions of people's jobs are at stake. 
And we ought to focus on that, not the, the, the partisan priorities uh, of Nancy Pelosi. And just quickly, any chance that things will move forward, that the talks will continue over the weekend? There's certainly a chance what we saw when these when when the Democrats played these games a couple of weeks ago, that they couldn't hold the line. And eventually what passed was actually very similar to the bipartisan bill that had been negotiated in the Senate to begin with. We may see the Democrats blink and realize that that holding small businesses hostage is not the right thing to do. I suspect a lot of Democrats are hearing from their small businesses, why are you cutting off the funds? These are emergency bridge loans to keep small businesses alive and to keep people in their jobs. And, and that needs to be our priority is keeping people uh, able to survive this crisis and move on and then have the economy roar back with small businesses driving the growth. Senator Cruz, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for your time tonight. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.